Thanks for joining us today on Owen's Bus on Biz. And don't forget, check out The Accent on the Arts on Facebook and Instagram. They also have a TikTok. It's a really cool concert series we're doing right now. It's free admission, and I totally implore you to check it out. It's really cool. So, And I am joined today with... I'm Adrian Davis. Oh, and my name is Bryce Putoff. Awesome. We're still discussing, going over the business ramifications of war and how it interacts in the modern world today and kind of how it's in a pretty unjust state right now. Adrian, you bring anything with you today? Um, yes, yeah, sure. Um, so what I basically uh, looked into and been, you know, just brainstorming on um, is the financial impact of war. Um, not only the general financial impact, but throughout history as well. Um, so a, f- a few fun facts I found out were just the, the direct cost of war, right? Um, there's things in here mentioned that I never even knew are, were a part of, you know, our actual our war habits, right? So the direct cost, one of them includes like expenses from just deploy- deploying uh, military forces, uh, purchasing weapon and equipment, um, actually conducting military operations as well, um, which is actually one of the biggest costs of any war impact. So also highlighting the history, World War I was approximately $151 billion in actual war cost um, and had a very impactful economic disruption as well, um, leading to a lot of um, debt, inflations, and disrupting our trades as well. Oh, that's insane. Thank you for that. I had no idea that World War I cost so much. Exactly. I, can't, I can't imagine how much yeah. World War II cost. Yeah, so actually, think about how much $151 billion would be. So World War I was 1914 through 1918. So think about how much $151 billion uh, would cost now, like in 2023, right? So um, I thought that was uh, pretty, pretty staggering. It really shocked me, honestly. Um, and to follow up to your point, World War III was actually $1.3 trillion. So that's also <laughs> Holy moly. a huge, you know, increase um, just over the, the course of 20 years when World War II came after World War I. So I thought that was all interesting. Yeah, really, it is. Yeah, I mean, I would say like trillions of dollars for a war is really crazy. I knew that it was definitely going to be a lot of money like put into wars, manufacturing weapons, making the plans like you were saying, deploying the troops. But I didn't realize it was even close to that much. So one thing I also um, read about that was impacted in that total cost was the actual aid even after the war that veterans receive um, during injuries is still a part of the total war cost, right? So um, things that get overlooked like um, structural damage, um, like I said, it drives inflation, um, Drive it drives um, actually a uh, it can crash the economy, which was kind of something that I overlooked. I never thought about the economic impact um, it could do if they bombed the uh, auto industry, right? Like that would really taint our actual, you know, economic impact, our GDP, right? So um, war just overall was kind of shocking that this whole topic was just something interesting, something I would have never looked into, and it's so impactful, you know? So I know, and it's a like pretty advantageous strategy to go for major economic like um, like cash cows essentially right. for other countries. Like um, Russia had bombed that pipeline in Israel, or not? Sorry, in uh, Ukraine, and that's like they're going straight for their resources just to like essentially bring down their economy and bring down just their support system. Like obviously, they need like oil for gasoline right that's a big way of their money yeah making. exactly like that's just like uh in that in russia's eyes it's just a military like i guess advantage a mi- right. like a military advantage but to ukraine it's like a huge hit like right. that, that has lasting ramifications other than a war that's happening now it can affect them 10 years down the line right because that's also i feel like that's also like a mental thing like that's like mentally damaging for them as well because they're like that's what we're going towards like out of everything we're going to do what makes you the most money it's not only is that hurting you physically but then it's also like mentally saying we know what's important to you and we can just stop it stop it all right and the fact that you said um the mental impact um that's another actual 
that's also equated in the total cost is um, a physical, like physical infrastructures, a social and psychological recovery efforts as well. So um, outside of just the the mental impact to an economy, it's also like the personal impact that a war veteran actually goes through and people who actually see those things, you know, happen firsthand also need their own personal care after that, you know, psychologically um, be reintroduced to our society, our civilization, right? Um, so it's a lot of efforts and a lot of cost that goes into both points you guys were mentioning. Yeah, and on the um, same to- topic of costs, um, if we turn back to defense contractors for a second, in 2012, the JSF, it's the Joint Strike Fighter, it was seven years behind schedule and $90 billion over budget. And it was $90 billion, $90 billion over budget. And um, the government was in, already in contract with uh, Raytheon to make this aircraft. Mm. So the government like designed it and Raytheon's super far behind, super over budget, but the government stuck with that. <laughs> and in conclusion to this, the taxpayers had to pay $1.3 trillion for this wow. aircraft. Furthermore, under contract, um, Raytheon holds the ability to maintenance and upgrade the plane. They wrote up a contract that um, they essentially keep the data in their company. So that way, if it, the plane breaks or it needs an upgrade, new technology comes out, etc., the government has to go back to Raytheon and pay them to fix it, mm. even though it's well. I guess essentially the government's leasing yeah, aircraft. Like. <laughs> like, they don't actually own the aircraft; they just pay money for it. I mean, but wouldn't that be smart though, in a way, right? Like if something does crash on a plane that I'm that I bought and paid for, but I really can't do any maintenance on it, mm-hmm. right? Ideally, I would want the people who made the plane to, you know, be in charge of the maintenance as well. True, true. But I'm assuming that the military also has mechanics that can fix them, you know? (laughs) Correct. Even (laughs) But, like, if it were just me flying my plane around, yeah, maybe you're right. But the government sees this as, like, what the heck, dude? You got, I just, my windshield just cracked and I have to go to you to fix it? Like, why can't, why can't I just have my buddy fix it, essentially? Your buddy can fix it, but if your buddy fix it and it cracks even worse, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> then what? You know? Maybe you're right. Then Maybe what? Right. You know, what if um, your buddy fixes it incorrect or he really doesn't know how to fix it <laughs> and says he does, right? That's funny. Thank you for joining us today, Owens Buzz on Biz. I'm Adrian. And I'm Bryce. And I'm Adam Hirsch. Thank you. This has been Owens Buzz on Biz. Presented by Marketing and Sales Students. On Outcast OCCR, Owens Community College Radio.